Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 6.6 of Mastering Parallel Programming series in C-Sharp, we are diving deep into an essential tool for managing multi-threaded application which is the blocking collection T. If you have ever struggled with synchronizing threads, managing producer-consumer scenarios or just want to make your multi-threaded code more robust, then this video is for you. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX that is parallel framework extension libraries in C -sharp. If you have been following along with my previous videos in this series, you might recognize this diagram. In our previous videos, we have covered PLinQ, that is parallel link queue, parallel class and task parallelism. Currently, we are learning concurrent collections. Dotted threads of concurrent collections. In our study of concurrent collection, we covered several key concepts and interfaces. We delve into the iProducer consumer collection T interface and its implementing classes like concurrent queue, concurrent stack and concurrent back. Additionally, we explored concurrent dictionary T key T value, orderable partitioner T source and partitioner T source. Today, our focus shifted to blocking collection T. How to use blocking collection T in c -sharp. Before we delve into how to use blocking collection T, it's important to first understand what a blocking collection is. So blocking collection T is a wrapper class that wraps any collection that implements i producer consumer collection t interface and it lets you take an element from the wrapped collection blocking if no element is available a blocking collection also lets you limit the total size of the collection blocking the producer if that size is exceeded collection limited in this manner is called bounded blocking collection okay so let's try to understand with the help of examples let's imagine a grocery store checkout Think of a blocking collection T like a special kind of line which is a queue at a grocery store checkout. Normal queue. What happens in normal queue? Normally, when you go to the checkout line and there is no cashier available, you just stand there and wait. But what if there were no way to wait and you just had to leave if no one was ready to help you? That would be like using the tri-take method on a regular correction like a concurrent QT, concurrent stack T. If there is no item like a cashier ready, you just get nothing and go away, right? So this is the things happens in the normal queue. Now consider the blocking collection queue. Imagine a checkout line where you are guaranteed someone will help you but you might have to wait this is where blocking collection t comes in if you are at the front of the line like the first portion in the queue but there is no cashier available you just wait until someone is ready you won't be sent away empty-handed so this is what happens when you call take on a blocking collection t so you are saying i will wait here until something is ready for me to take okay so here let's understand the code snippet how we are going to use this blocking collection t in c sharp so first of all we need to create an instance of the blocking collection t and here i have mentioned capacity of the file that's what i have written this statement blocking collection t obj blocking collection is equal to new blocking collection int new concurrent queue int and then bounded capacity i have mentioned five over here so this creates an instance of the blocking collection that stores integers and the new concurrent queue int it is nothing but the blocking collection is wrapping a this class which is a thread safe queue right and bounded capacity 5 so this blocking collection has a capacity limit of the 5 item if the collection reaches this limit any further addition will block until a space is available that's the meaning of this statement right now what we need to do we need to start a task for the baker that is nothing but the producer so what i have written over here task producer is equal to task dot run and then inside that i have written for loop what for loop is going to do it is just going to execute 10 times and then it is going to add integer value into this blocking collection object right that's what i have written obj blocking collection dot add i and whatever i have added i'm just writing into the console window what i have added it means what i have produced right console dot write line produced i that i'm going to print into the console window then what i'm doing i have written obj blocking collection dot complete adding so this method is called after all items are produced it signals that no more items will be added to the collection now now i need to start a task for the consumer for that i have written again another task task consumer is equal to task dot run and here i have written for each loop where item in obj blocking collection dot get consumer innumerable so this loop iterates over the items in the blocking collection locks and waits if the collection is empty resuming when an item becomes available so this loop will end when complete adding is called and all items are consumed and finally i'm just printing what item has been consumed that's what i have written console dot write line consumed and what is the item that i have consumed that 
right so each consume item is printed on the console window with the help of this console dot right line state so here the producer task adds item to the blocking collection and if the collection reaches its capacity the producer will wait until the consumer makes a space and the consumer task what it does it removes items from the blocking collection and processes them if there are no items available the consumer will wait until items are produced so this pattern ensures that the producer and consumer operate efficiently without overrunning each other thanks to the blocking behavior managed by the blocking collection te so blocking collection overall it simplifies the implementation of the producer consumer pattern in a multi threaded environment and handles synchronization and blocking automatically now let's talk about the key feature of the blocking collection te number 1 wait for availability what does it mean if you try to take an item from the collection and it's empty blocking collection te makes you wait until something is available So this is useful in scenarios where you know something will eventually show up and you want to wait for it number 2 bounded and unbounded collections you can also limit how many items can be in the collection at once think of it as a rule that says only 10 people can be in line at the checkout at the same time if 10 people are already in line anyone else who tries to join has to wait until someone checks out and leaves so this prevents the line or we can say as a collection from getting too long it is not mandatory that you need to limit the size of the collection you can leave it unbounded as well that's what this number 2 point says bounded and unbounded collection come to the third point multiple checkout what does it mean if you have multiple checkout lines that means multiple blocking collection t instances and you don't care which one you use you can ask which line can i join first you will be added to the first one that has a space for you or you will be served by the first cashier who is ready this is like using the add to any or take from any methods of blocking collection t finally we have the easy synchronization So what does it mean it abstracts away the complexity of the locks pulses and other synchronization mechanism that we have learned earlier so it gives us easy way implement all those things in abstract way okay so let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action okay so here we are on visual studio here i am going to show a demo of the producer consumer pattern using blocking collection t in c sharp to show the demo what i have done i have created one console application named blocking collection demo that has program.cs file in program.cs file first of all i have added necessary name spaces like using system using system.collection.concurrent using system.threading.task then there is a class name program that has main method is an entry point of this application in this main method first of all i am just printing this statement into console window demo of blocking collection t in c sharp then what i am doing i am just going to create an instance of the blocking collection with a capacity of 5 lobes so that's what i have written blocking collection int obj blocking collection equal to new blocking collection int new concurrent queue int and then bounded capacity 5 so this statement creates a blocking collection that holds integer here i am representing a loaf of bread and uses a concurrent queue int as its underlying collection and i have mentioned bounded capacity as a 5 that specifies that the collection can hold a maximum of five loaves at any time if the collection reaches its capacity the baker that is the producer will block until a customer that is the consumer takes a loaf then what i have done i have written this statement task producer is equal to task dot run and then i have called this baker method and inside that i have passed an object of this blocking collection that's what i have written baker obj blocking collection so basically what i am doing over here i am just creating a task of the baker is nothing but playing as a role of producer over here so this starts a new task that runs the baker method asynchronously so the baker method will keep adding loaves of the bread to the blocking collection until it's told to stop then what i have done i have started the task for the consumer that's what i have written task array consumer task is equal to new task 4 so here an array of task is created for the four customers then i have written for loop what for loop is going to do it is just going to iterate how many consumer task we have based on that it will be looping in this for loop what i am doing each customer task runs the customer method asynchronously that's what i have written customer obj blocking collection i plus 1 with the customer numbers 1 to 4 that i have passed as an argument over here then what i have done i have written task dot wait all producer So it waits for the baker task to finish similarly i have used task dot wait all consumer task it waits for the all customer task to finish then finally i have written console dot read line statement now let's look into this baker method what it does if you see this baker method baker method is the static method that is accepting blocking collection and then what it does i have written int loop number is equal to 0 
it initializes the loc number over here and then i have written while not blocking collection dot is adding completed what does it mean the baker keeps producing loaves until is adding completed is true and then i have written thread dot sleep 500 so basically i am simulating time to bake a loaf of bread and then i am incrementing this loaf number loaf number plus plus and then checking not blocking collection dot try add loaf number what i am doing over here i am trying add the loaf to the blocking collection if the collection is full it waits until a space is available if the add is successful a message is printed in the console this statement is just going to get printed into console view baker added loaf number to the counter if the collection is full it waits until a space is available in that case this the statement is going to get printed into console window counter full baker waiting to the add loaf number and then i have issued complete adding method of blocking collection that's what i have written blocking collection dot complete adding so it signals that no more items will be added to the collection then finally i have written this statement baker has finished baking that's what baker method performs their work and then let's review the customer method what customer method does customer method is nothing but the static method it just has two input parameters blocking collection and customer number it first check while not blocking collection dot is completed it means the customer keeps trying to take loaves until is completed is true so indicating no more loaves will be added and all have been consumed right then what i am doing i am just going to use this try take method that's what i have written blocking collection dot try take out loaf number comma time spent from seconds to so it tries to take a loaf from the collection successful within two seconds a message is printed this message is going to get printed into console with customer customer number took loaf loaf number if no loaf is available in two seconds it prints the customer is waiting that's what this statement is going to get printed customer customer number is waiting for more bread finally i'm just printing this statement customer has left the back that's what this customer method does. so now you have seen this program structure okay so let me go and execute this program and show this output to you okay so output has started appearing into console window demo of blocking collection t in c sharp baker added one in the counter customer five took the loaf number and baker added two to the counter customer three took loaf number two baker added three to the counter customer three took loaf number three and so on so overall this program uses blocking collection t to handle a producer consumer scenario where synchronization and thread safety are crucial so the baker here what it does it produces items and adds them to a bounded collection that we have defined with the help of blocking collection right where we have mentioned this bounded capacity so it just add them to a bounded collection and multiple customers consume these items all while ensuring the producer does not overproduce and the consumer do not over consume okay so that brings me to end of my session today to sum up in this video we learned what blocking collection t is here t is nothing but the data type that we can replace at the runtime and we also learn how to use it in a program right so now you know why you should use blocking collection t in your project right so it's perfect for scenarios where you have multiple threads that need to communicate or work together efficiently it reduces the complexity of the managing threads manually and helps prevent common issues like race condition and deadlocks that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video